Mm. And welcome back to Otaku No Video, as always. Thank you very much for joining me for this review of Pet Girl of Sakurasso, a 2012 uh, anime TV series set in a, uh, a, a college, sort of a screwball comedy anime series. So Pet Girl is about the weirdo's dorm. This is the place where all of the weirdos are sent to kind of be away from the normal students and not contaminate them. Uh, the main character is a boy who is sent there for reasons too complicated to explain. The point is, he's normal, while his dorm mates include a scatterbrained anime fan who is literally drawing her own anime, a spacey manga artist who forgets to, for example, put on clothes, a handsome writer who is sleeping with everything female within like five miles, a programmer who literally never leaves his room, and the dorm mother who is supposed to be guiding them all but actually spends all of her time smoking and going to bars. Pet Girl is actually a lot more than that, but I'll get to that in a minute. Thank goodness this has the relatively high animation budget of recent anime series. Now, as a relational show, as a comedy uh, with relational elements, it doesn't need as many frames of animation as, say, a high action action story. However, it does use that animation to express emotion and character personality. Characters turn away, or cast down their eyes, or otherwise move to express emotion. It's not all in the dialogue, which is really nice. Now, the characters are drawn in a style that does not change much from the standard model of the characters, meaning there's not much squash and stretch like you'd see in, say, Azumanga Daio or some of the other screwball comedy series where characters will suddenly go super deformed, things like that. That doesn't happen in Pet Girl. It's actually a relatively realistic art style. Obviously, the characters don't look real, but in terms of, I'd say, animation style, um, the characters are moving um, and, and turning around. They feel like three-dimensional characters in a three-dimensional, real modern space. It also avoids uh, anime visual cliche, like sweat drops and things like that, in favor of just posture and expression. There's a little bit of that here and there uh, in the series, especially in terms of characters having um, surprises and uh, uh, things like that, but the vast majority of it is, again, uh, realistic. Also, the characters stay pretty much on model throughout the entire series. I.e., it doesn't look like they farmed out the animation to uh, low-quality studios that couldn't match the uh, character designs. I mean, I'm sure it was farmed out to lots of studios, but they all match those character designs quite closely. The show is also edited with a crisp, steady rhythm. Uh, shots don't go for very long without cutting, um, meaning that you get exactly what you need in those shots. Some shots do last quite a long time, actually, but that's very much intentional. More importantly, I never felt like the show was conserving frames. Now we get to the characters. I really like this about the show. Pet Girl is a relational show, meaning that it is um, the, the story is driven by the characters and how they act, as opposed to larger events in the story pushing them along. There are a few of those, but the vast majority of the story is about the characters acting. And this gets to Pet Girl's greatest strength. Pet Girl is actually about doing something with your life. It is about characters taking control of their life and actually doing something. Whether that works out or not, they don't know. Um, and without getting into spoilers, for a couple of these characters, it doesn't go the way they expect it to and there are some significant failures. The main character starts out living this average passive life. He's going to school, getting an unexceptional uh, degree, and he's just kind of going and moving forward. Then he's surrounded by all these kind of crazy people, um, but they're actually moving forward, and the other characters help to propel the main character forward on his own path. Indeed, the first ending credit sequence, I think, is something of an allusion to this whole theme. Now, the characters speak straightforward and occasionally powerful dialogue. Fortunately, the writers remember that these characters are in college, so they talk like you or I do. The, there's not a lot of um, uh, stilted dialogue, um, and there's a fair amount of just simple sort of curb dialogue, the kind of stuff we would have in regular life anyway. However, they're all going through a very stressful time in their life, and this is reflected in their language and dialogue. They get curt. Uh, they argue with each other, and often they're not explaining things to each other in the way that we often don't explain things to each other. Uh, it's quite realistic in that way. And while we're at it, I was really impressed with this. 
lots of anime and manga have uh, periods where characters lash out at each other and it comes completely out of the blue and suddenly characters are, you know, I hit you and they run away and it's like, where did that happen? Where, where did that come from? Pet Girl doesn't do this. It establishes the characters and establishes the characters' personalities and their motivations and why they're doing things so that when they lash out, you understand where they're coming from. Now, I watched the Japanese dub with English subtitles and the voice actors all fit their roles very well. Um, in particular, I wanted to uh, point out uh, Nanami's voice actress, Mariko Nakatsu, who had to hit a wide range of pretty unusual emotions and hit that very well. Um, also, uh, Megumi Toyoguchi uh, brought this wonderful whimsicalness to, um, to Jihiro Sensei, the, uh, the, the, the dorm mother, and I just really liked how she handled that character. I thought it was a, kind of an unusual uh, uh, character where you have this... Um, den mother who isn't really paying attention to anyone but you know, does occasionally have to kind of step in and give some advice um, and I think she just hit that very well. So overall Pet Girl brings this high quality animation to a very emotionally charged story about college students kind of taking charge of their own life which is a theme that is often hinted at in anime series but is rarely addressed full on in Pet Girl and uh, or like it is in Pet Girl and um, uh, is rarely addressed in as much detail and as realistically as it, as it is in Pet Girl. I'm very impressed.